introduction. Perfect. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to continue the show and tell. Um, I have uh, my board here. Uh, it's good and works, so try not to break it, but if you do, no big deal. Um, and it has all the connectors and stuff, so you can sort of play with it. That's sort of one of the key elements of the design, is I tried to make the form factor sort of nice to work with. And it's thought, so feel free to play with it. Okay, I'm Mariano, and um, uh, I designed this uh, small and in inexpensive single board computer, uh, specifically for um, autonomous sailboat control with the Micromagics in mind, and uh, with our uh, one meter uh, boat in mind. So, um, that was the goal, and um, the other goal is uh, I'm fairly involved with open source and open hardware development, um, so I wanted to release this um, as open hardware, um, which I've done this morning, so uh, the, there's a link in the paper and a link at the end, so you can uh, go get um, the files and everything, it's uh, under Creative Commons. Um, uh, and just personally, I like to do uh, custom work. Um, the, the, I'm sort of on the, uh, I like to uh, spend a little more time and sort of achieve that perfect fit where you, you don't really have anything on there that you don't want and everything that you do want on there is there. Um, and that's sort of the main benefit of going custom. Um, it, it has all kinds of other problems though. Uh, uh, so, uh, sort of system requirement or the little deeper requirements. Uh, we have been involved with the Micromagic since last year. Um, so, uh, we wanted to achieve a fully autonomous Micromagic. Um, we also wanted it to be applicable to larger boats. Um, and just sort of surveying what other people do, very, everybody's using sort of different communication systems, so having flexibility there would be good for a lot of people. Um, and then low cost is always nice and low power is great. Um, so just so when you're sort of looking at this chart, um, there's two funny columns, the full OS column and the RCOS column. And, and my definitions for that are full OS is, you know, something like Linux. That's a CPU that has memory management. You can run um, Linux or Android, which is Linux, and um, uh, anything that's sort of a real OS. And then RCOS would be, you know, the code that you put on microcontrollers. Um, microcontrollers tend to be better at sort of hacking together C stuff and, and doing things in real time with all the peripherals and that sort of stuff. Um, it, it ends up doing that on Linux is, can be a pain. Um, and this is, you know, this is a great opportunity to look at, find yourself on this chart and look across here and start telling me that, you know, I, I've mischaracterized everything. I tried to do my best. Um, it, you know, your guys' rabbit core is actually pretty low power. I think you have a bunch of other stuff around it that ends up using a lot of power. So you can kind of see where this falls, where my board falls in. It's, it's sort of on the lower side. Um, and then... Uh, it can it can support Linux, and then there's another microcontroller on it that you can put all of your real-time stuff on. And that microcontroller provides 802.15.4, which is Zigbee or XP communications. And then it has USB, so you can put in a USB stick to do whatever else you want. And it was designed to fit into Micromatic. Um, so, uh, when you're going to take on a project like this, you need to pick out your, your CPUs. And um, uh, picking one for Linux is no small task. There's uh, easily hundreds of, of CPUs out there that can run Linux. Uh, so to sort of narrow it, I use ARM, uh, which is in pretty much everybody's cell phone. It's, it's a very good low power uh, architecture that runs Linux or can run Linux. Um, and then you still haven't really narrowed it down. Um, so another way you break it out is you can break it out by what sort of memory the chips can use. And these are um, sort of the vintages involved. Uh, this is the oldest, and then this is the next best, and then this is the latest and the greatest. Um, and when you do that and you group them, you end up sort of grouping um, processor speed and core performance along with them. Uh, nobody makes an A8 gigahertz ARM that uses SDRAM, for instance. Um, and then you can kind of see how the, the cost kind of goes along with that. 
Um, and so what I did is I pushed to the low cost and low performance corner of, of the, sort of the available chips that you can get off of DigiKey or Mauser, sort of readily available things. And that ends up being the LPC3130 by NXP. So that's what's on it. Um, for the microcontroller, um, I mean, this is the chip that I use, and I can, I've given entire talks on this chip and why I use it, so I'm just going to sort of hit the highlights. Um, it's a very capable microcontroller, but the really neat thing about it is that it has this on-chip radio. So all you have to do is hook up an antenna to it, and um, you have a microcontroller with 802.15.4. Um, and it's, uh, for all of its features, it's, it's, a, it's a really good price point. It's well supported by the Contiki operating system, which provides a lot of neat features. The two ones that I like are you can use either IPv4 or IPv6, so you can put these on the internet. Um, and then you have sort of um, a thread-based system using a coroutine structure. Um, so you're writing C code, but you have threads, and it all kind of makes that work. And then this is the block diagram that we ended up with. Um, so, sort of, you're out here on the shore, and then this is everything that's on your boat. Uh, and then this block here is the board. Um, so you've got your sensors, you've got your servos, uh, you got a Wi-Fi stick. Um, all of that sort of plugs into the board that you're holding. Uh, there's a little bit of analog signal conditioning, some power stuff that I didn't put on here because power goes everywhere. Um, you have the, the real-time <coughs> operating system CPU, which runs Contiki, does your real-time sailboat control. It has a radio, so you can use that to, to um, offload data and telemetry. Uh, and then you have the thing running Linux with an SD card for bulk storage. Um, that can do whatever software tasks you wanted, you'd rather do in Linux. Uh, which is probably a lot of things. They're connected by a serial UR. Um, so this is the board. Uh, this is sort of the top of the board. This is how you would see it. I decided to put all of the things that you'd want to interface to on this side um, so that when you have it installed in a system, you know, with these standoffs, you can get to the SD card, you can see the, the LEDs, you have a debug connector, you can um, swap out the USB for other things if you'd like. And then um, you sort of connect your system with these pin headers. Uh, the board is, well, you're holding it so you can see how big it is. This would be the back side, uh, sort of getting into what's on here. Um, so I've included um, a power supply. It's a switching power supply. Um, it's a high voltage input tolerant power supply, so it'll take anything from 7 to 42 volts. Um, so you could run it off of a fairly serious battery pack without any problems. It's a switcher, so um, you know it produces these two voltages it needs efficiently across the input range. Um, and then I put down some specs you get from this chip. It's a 200 megahertz ARM9, 32 megs of RAM. So that's the power supply there. Um, this guy's the CPU. It's a ball grid array, so it's a little difficult to solder. Um, this is the SD RAM, so all 32 megs are on one chip. Um, this is some op amp buffers, precision op amp buffers, um, so you get the voltages you want back over here. And uh, this guy on the on the right is the the MC1322 module. That's the microcontroller that runs pretty much most of the outside pins. Um, and has its own radio too, if you'd like. All right. Um, I want to sort of zoom in on how this debug connector works. Uh, this provides access to the serial ports on the board. Um, so you use this for debugging and development. The really nice thing about this cable is that it adds zero board cost. Um, uh, and, and it clips in really nicely, so I don't know if you playing around with that at all, but I'm very fond of this feature. Um, uh, so you can talk to either the either the microprocessors over this cable, you can provide power over this cable, and you can reset them. Um, it's sort of basic stuff. Uh, and then to wire into your board, or into your boat, or your robot, or whatever you're using, um, 
you can sort of have these fixed wire harnesses that might be all tangled up in your systems and impossible to remove, but then you can just pop them off um, when you want to take them out of your board and uh, swap it out or, or move them to other pins. Um, Uh, so this is sort of the final bill of materials and, and shows where we ended up on cost and you can see uh, sort of some of the cost drivers. This is the, the, the cheap Linux CPU and the cheap RAM. Um, and then you just sort of nickeled and dimed uh, by a lot of the other stuff. You know, a dollar for the connector, two bucks for the SD card. Each power supply adds another two dollars. Uh, the other big ones are uh, the Wi-Fi stick. This is an approximate one. You can get them sort of all over the place. Um, you can get $40 ones. You can get $5 ones. Uh, this module, I can make this module for $12. The op amps are expensive because they're nice op amps. Um, and then I just sort of lumped in some of the other things, like the pin headers, and you know, there's just a bunch of stuff not on this list. That's more or less six bucks. PCB is three, and then I actually got a quote. Uh, for assembly. This depends on quantity. I don't know if this is quantity 100 or quantity 1,000, but um, it's sort of in the $10 range. And, uh, so this is manufactured cost, 60 bucks, more or less. And I uh, wanted to break out all of the power. Um, so I measured, these are all measured powers um, as I sort of operated each system. Um, so the, uh, the, the core Linux system is using 160 mil, 165 milliwatts. The LEDs actually uh, use a reasonable amount of power, so turn those off. Um, uh, you add the power supply, so you take a little bit of overhead for the power supply, but it's efficiently making your voltages, so you still want that. Um, the, the microcontroller is low power, but the radio is not. Um, so this is sort of, uh, 4 dBm is the stock output power of this chip. You can also add an external PA and do, at least the regulatory limit in the US is 20 dBm, um, and uh, ends up using half a watt that way. Um, Wi-Fi is also a big guy. So depending on how you're doing your communications, you can be either using a third of a watt or two watts. Our story. Um, and that's more or less it. I'm happy to take questions. This is a picture of the board layout. Um, and that's how you can get all the files for it. Uh, you can't see it. Uh, it's uh, made in Eagle, which is a readily available um, circuit board software. And then the routing is actually done with uh, a separate system called Free Router, which is a push and shove router. Um, so it actually you know, you might look at this board in Eagle and say, well, you know, that it would take me three weeks to do anything to it. But uh, if you use FreeRouter, um, you can actually, say, take that trace there, delete it, and then push it all the way back through some other way, and that would only take five or ten minutes. Um, so uh, if you use Eagle, I highly recommend FreeRouter uh, for um, many tasks. And, uh, that's it. and some other things. So there's definitely going to be boards that use this CPU combination. I'm almost certainly going to do a run of this board or a board very similar to it. Um, maybe a run of 100. Um, I don't know exactly where that price is going to come out, but it's uh, it's going to be, it's not going to be jumped to $600 each or anything like that. It may go up. I, I'll have to look up where that $60 but yes, uh, if there's interest, I will certainly uh, make many. Uh, Have you considered it on something like Kickstarter to get interest? Well, 
yeah, so uh, I can talk to you a little bit about how I feel about Kickstarter. The thing with Kickstarter, right, is um, uh, you take a bunch of people's money and maybe you promise some things. Uh, so I like to make sure that I can deliver on those promises before I start taking people's money. Um, so this only recently got to the point where I'm sort of comfortable um, handing it out to people or, or you know, even booting reliably and that sort of stuff. So, um, so yeah, I could Kickstarter it, but honestly, at this point, it's a pre-sales thing. So I could pre-sell it on Kickstarter, or I could just sell it, sell it. So I don't know. Yeah. Just interested to hear a bit about programming it. How do you? What software environments do you use, and what's your kind of routine for? Yeah. The microcontroller? Um, oh, for the microcontroller? Yeah. Well, for for both. So. Um, the, the Linux CPU has the um, SD card on there, yes. um, so it's relatively easy to provision an SD card. So you put it in, you turn it on, and, and you start to boot Linux. Uh, you can use the serial console at that point and just start locking in. Um, that's the first interface. Then through USB, you want to get some sort of networking. So the easiest thing is to put in a USB Ethernet stick. You plug in an Ethernet cable, and now you have network so you can SSH into it, do what you want. Yeah. Um, getting Wi-Fi going, I mean, it's, it's however you do it. The microcontroller, um, there are some scripts that you run from Linux that uh, will load code onto it and flash it or erase it. Um, and then Contiki is sort of its own system. So, so you have all that wired up straight from the, from the microprocessor? Right. Yeah. Right. So off the serial console, you can just... Um, if you can transfer, you either put a file that you want um, on the SD card, you transfer it over the network, or you should be able to actually build a binary for the microcontroller on the Linux board because they're both ARMs, so they both use the same tool chain, and, um, uh, and then load the code onto that, and it's relatively easy I mean, as far as these things go. Yeah. Sounds really cool. Um, so, can you run some Debian Linux or something in standard like that? Yeah. So uh, I'm using Arch. Uh, I've run Linux on, or sorry, Debian on it. The issue that I had with Debian is apt is actually the package base has become so huge on Debian that it completely clobbered the RAM on the thing, and it started swapping immediately. Um, there's probably ways around that. Um, uh, so Debian, but yeah, Debian works pretty good. Debian's a little bit difficult, I think, just from some of the no, no, actually, yeah, you can just fetch straight from the ARM distribution in Debian, and all that works. Uh, open WRT, that That's why I said Debian is because you've got sort of 15,000 packages available in the repository. Yeah, it's really nice. The only problem with Debian is that it, it's, it, it, they're not as lean as some of the other ones, and this guy does not have a lot of RAM. It's only 32 megs, and uh, by the time you've booted up and you're in Linux, you have 11 megs free, which is pretty good to do a lot of stuff. Great. Any other questions? Yes, it's your turn.